Hey guys, uh, today we are going to do some work in Onshape, and uh, I'm going to make a paper clip. Now, I'm going to be using the tutorial created by Onshape to make this model today. I want you to follow along and make this along with me, and then after this, you will be responsible for making a 3D model using the Sweep tool. Uh, if you would like to see where I'm getting this from, there's actually a, an extra credit opportunity right now that you can complete. Uh, in the Learning Center in Onshape. So if you click on this little button up here that says Learning Center, then it will take you to Onshape's uh, tutorial page. Uh, there's a lot of different options here. We're going to go to Self-Paced Courses, and we want the one that's called Part Design Using Part Studios. So the extra credit opportunity is that you can complete Section 2 of this course all the way up through the completion of this coffee cup model, and if you send me a link to your completed 3D model, then you will get extra credit. I think this is a great practice tool to use for 3D modeling, so I would strongly encourage you to use this. Today I'm going to go through creating this paperclip using the tutorial. So I've already created a 3D uh, file for this. Um, for this assignment, I would like for you to create a file that is using our naming convention. So for this class, it will be 4A your last name, your first name, uh, today's date, which I believe is the 7th, and then we are going to name this Sweep. So that's what you need to name your file for today's class. 4A, your last name, your first name, the date, and Sweep. I'm going to go back to this file, though, because I've already made a file for the paperclip. Okay, so first things first, we need to make sure that we change our units to millimeters. So I'm going to go up to this menu here, and I'm going to click on Workspace Units. And by default, we use inches, but this time we're going to use millimeters. So close that little bubble there. And we are going to start our first sketch on the top plane. So I'm Alt-clicking. I'm clicking on New Sketch, and then I'm going to click Top on my View Cube to snap my view up there. Move this guy out of the way. So now we are going to create a path for our paper clip, and I'm going to use lines and arcs to do this. So I'm going to start my line on the origin up here, and I'm just going to roughly make this shape using lines and arcs. So something like this, and then I'm going to make another line, make it come up here. I do want to make sure these lines have horizontal constraints applied. And you can see that it automatically does that uh, when, uh, when I'm creating the line, because it'll snap to that path. Make another arc, click, click, and then Bring this up here, and then another line. Now, when we're using the line tool, you may have noticed that when I click, it tries to add another line. If you just press escape, it gets you out of the tool. All right, so then another arc here, and then one last line. OK, so here is our rough shape for our paperclip. And if I click on Show Constraints here, you see that it's automatically applied some relationships. That's what these little symbols mean. These are all constraints, rules, that the shapes have to, to kind of uh, follow. Number one, please make sure that this first line is connected to our origin. OK, so we've got a bunch of constraints here. So this is a vert, uh, horizontal constraint. And so all of our horizontal lines need to have that. So make sure that they all have a horizontal constraint. I believe that this one is missing one, actually. There we go. Uh, this one's got a horizontal constraint. Up here, you see this straight line. This is a vertical constraint. So this means that these two points are vertically aligned, which means that they are, if I just draw straight down, they have a, an invisible line connecting them. Same for these two and these two. And that's because of the shape of the arc. So we've got a uh, tangent constraint here, which means that this line is tangent to the circle here, which means that it just comes straight out of it. 
And that's true for all of our arcs. So all we're doing here is just making sure that we have the correct relationships that are applied here. So we, we're going to add a couple more constraints. Uh, we want the end point of this line to be vertical to the end point on this paperclip point. So we're going to use a vertical constraint. This guy has to be vertical with this guy. Now see, that moved it all the way over here. Now I'm going to just click drag. Let me get rid of these guys for a second. I'm going to move this all the way back here just a little bit. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a horizontal constraint. And I'm using this constraint menu up here. If you don't see this option, you can always click on search tools to find it. And I want to make these two horizontally aligned, which means that there should be an invisible flat line that connects these two points. All right, so I believe we've got the dimensions that we need, and I'm going to, uh, the, the constraints that we need, and I'm going to add the dimensions. So these are all from the tutorial page. So the first one is that the distance from here to here is 75 millimeters. The diameter of this this arc right here is 20 millimeters. You can see that my lines are starting to change color. They're starting to turn black. Just going to check this distance here. This should be 125. The distance between, <laughs> between these two points here should be 25. Then this needs to have an arc of 15. And then I believe that is everything that we need. And that's starting to look like a real paperclip. So if I close this sketch, we can see that that is correct. And the important thing here is that when we're making this, we want to make sure that all of our lines are black, which means that they are fully constrained. All of the relationships are true. So if I try to click drag any of these guys, they don't go anywhere. All right. So the next thing that we are going to do is we are going to rename this sketch into path sketch. This is helpful when we have multiple things going on in our 3D model so we know which sketch goes with which part. All right, so we are going to make a new sketch now on the right plane. So I'm going to click sketch and then right. And we're going to sketch a circle and make it five millimeter diameter. So there's our five millimeter circle. Now we, we do want to do one thing here. We want this point right here to be coincident with this one. So I'm going to use the coincident constraint, which is this little T looking guy right here. And I want the middle of this to be coincident with the origin. You can see that it snapped right over there. This is going to make the path for our sweep which is going to make this entire 2D drawing of a paperclip three-dimensional. So now we're going to rename this sketch Profile Sketch. And hit the checkbox. Next. All right, so we've got both sketches finished, and now we're going to use the Sweep tool. So when we open this tool, it's going to ask us what face we want to sweep, and then what path we want to sweep. So first I'm going to click on my circle here, and then I'm going to click on Sweep Path, and I'm going to take it through each of those shapes that we've made here, and just click on each section one at a time to make our shape. And then I'm going to click the checkbox, and that is our paperclip. I'm going to rename this part paperclip. And that 
is it. Now, one other thing that we can do is we can alt click on our paperclip here in the parts menu and we can assign it a material. So according to the tutorial, we need to name that aluminum 1060. So I'm going to type in aluminum and click on 1060. Click the checkbox. And that is it. There is our completed paperclip. So now your task is to create this model if you haven't finished that already. And then I want you to make your own sweep 3D model. So you can make a different file and it can be completely of your own design. Try to keep it simple since this is your second time using the sweep tool. But let me know if you have any questions. Good luck.